Okay, hi everybody. My name is Adrian Burzu. I'm part of the observability team. I'm covering uh, observability management uh, of the OCI uh, portfolio, but also I'm, uh, let's say, I'm uh, an OCI spe specialist in security and also on-premise security and so on. So some of the features that uh, I'm going to show you today can also be extended to the security portfolio too. So, uh, can we go on the next page? Uh, well, this type of presentation, yeah, I like to do it as uh, with demos. Yeah, I don't uh, want to show uh, a lot of slides, only some high-level slides, and I want to set a little bit the expectation on what uh, we can have in there. So, first slide that you see here is talking a little bit about the design principle for OCI observability management tools. Okay, so when Oracle created uh, this portfolio in OCI. Uh, its main purpose was to create a complete solution yeah, that will support the full stack from operating system, databases, mid tires, and applications. Also, yeah, we're going to try to eliminate the monitoring silos yeah, that uh, you, you're going to find it yeah, in other uh, products. Uh, we have metrics in other central location, traces in other logs, in others, and so on. So you're going to see that our products are doing this in a unified way. Now, uh, I think you heard about the melt, melts uh, concept. Yeah, when you're gonna have everything uh, yeah, in one world, you're gonna have everything. Yeah, that you see here. So monitoring, traces, logs, uh, events, and so on. Now, other important thing yeah, on uh, OCI products, um, we're trying to be as open as possible. So because of that, yeah, we're trying to make our product business centric. Yeah, and we're gonna try to help the customer to get data from multiple locations, from multiple cloud providers. Uh, if they have this in mind, it, we can go also and get data from on-premise solutions because uh, if you're taking about the mo monitoring part, our agent is able to collect data from anywhere. And um, yeah, we also try to add other solutions that can be integrated with our uh, observability tools. Yeah, they uh, support uh, the DevOps case yeah, in all of this. Also, things that you're going to see in the products that we're going to talk about it, uh, some of them are uh, let's say uh, focused yeah with very deep dive knowledge on oracle stack okay so if you're talking about stack monitoring yeah you're gonna see that we have the capabilities to do monitoring of uh, oracle databases or uh, oracle application like ebs uh, and so on yeah very simple yeah with only a few clicks this is something that yeah no other competition is able to do it because yeah they, they don't have that type of knowledge and they're not even if they're going to provide tools they will not gonna move into developing at the pace that Oracle is doing. The third part yeah, of the design principle is also the value. Yeah. So as I said before, we design the tools for hybrid and multi-cloud environments. We have support for different uh, technology stacks. And what is most important part? Yeah. Open standards. Yeah. Oracle is working a lot with open standards. Yeah. We are part of the CNCF. We are using. Uh, and we're able to ingest data from open tracing, open telemetry, FreeND, and so on. So yeah, this is one of the things that I'm uh, really proud and I really like it um, yeah, into these products. Can we go next, Violeta? Okay, yeah. So talking about the observability, uh, everyone you know yeah, how observability can uh, be composed from multiple things. In here, as you can see, on the left side, we have the multi-cloud environment, so that can be well, anyway, clouded customer, yeah, it can be your own premise, can be a private cloud, can be AWS, can be Azure, can be Google, OCI, and so on. So all the observability tools that you're going to see it in there, yeah, they can uh, extend to these solutions. Uh, in the telemetry types, yeah, we have the MELT, yeah, acronym that you have it, and it's referring to the metrics that we're able to collect from the machines, the events, yeah, that uh, the services are generating, and we can also collect them and put it, uh, we can even create logs from that type of events. We also have the logs that can be collected from multiple sources. We have the traces from the web applications, and also we have a lot of details related to the SQL, but this is not going to be part of the today's uh, uh, presentation. Now, if you look at the beginning, yeah, first part, application performance monitoring, yeah, we're moving a little bit more into advanced monitoring, yeah, so if someone uh, realize the capabilities of their application, they realize that it is important for them to have everything up and running or maybe to identify root cause of things that are happening in um, their environment, application performance monitoring is the solution, yeah, you can go, you can go into the uh, uh, application and you get at the trace level and even at the span level. So you can look, everything is in there. Stack monitoring, yeah, it's uh, appeared as a very cheap solution from Oracle that is coming over the basic monitoring, which is uh, 
free of charge for a few billion end points. So it is almost free, I can say that. Uh, but this comes with additional features, yeah, like uh, let's say correlation between different products that can be done uh, by achieving by promoting the host to do that, and so on. Logging analytics, yeah, it's the one of the tools that I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth. It is one aggregation tool that can be used also as a CM solution. If you're gonna create your own um, correlation rules in there, you're gonna create your own dashboards. You're gonna get data, let's say maybe from databases, from operating system, from different products, and so on, and you can start doing a lot of deep dive analysis yeah we have the ai part that is in the back end the end is very nice and also the machine learning uh, algorithm everything that is in there database and uh, os management yeah these are the really important tools that are in there they're gonna help the customer to have insights into the these applications yeah so you can also see it uh, in in uh, um running very nicely in a lot of our customers that are discovering and they realize the full potential of these solutions and also we have the capability yeah, to create capacity planning we can go and look in sql insights yeah we can do capacity planning for the databases for oracle databases or also for the hosts that are in there so these are let's say a very very high level description of the tools so we're going to move on the next slide and uh, in the next slide yeah I'm going to show you something about the Oracle commitment on uh, developing the observability tools that we have. Okay, so this is part of the cloud world presentation. It is uh, already public, so we can talk about it. Um, you have over 500 new features in the last 12 months into these applications. Okay, so we have a lot of things that are integrated with like vulnerability detection and patching that are part of uh, our services and are, um, they can be uh, collected and uh, correlated with different other services. We have a threat impact analysis. Yeah, we have things that are also related to the SQL databases. Yeah, as you can see, SQL watch, SLA reporting, uh, dashboards across regions, uh, auto machine learning forecasting and so on. A lot of futures, yes. Yeah? So we'll be prepared for the next year when we're gonna get a lot of new, other new futures. We are very, let's say, happy to so, to see in at Cloud World what are the plans. Also, these are different presentations. They're also public, so we can take a look into them. Okay, next. Okay, so now what, what I'm gonna focus a little bit in here in today's presentation, it is uh, things related to dossier security management platform. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about only two, three different, let's say products. We have a lot of more products in OCI, but the things that you're seeing in here, yeah, uh, they're very powerful and they work very nice. Okay, so we have uh, OCI login analytics. These can be the center point for security analytics uh, solution, okay? So we have the capability to ingest structure and structure security data in events in there. We can get, we can send, let's say, metrics directly to this solution yeah, and then do some correlation between the metrics and the logs. We have out of the box data sources, parser and enrichments, yeah, that can be done on the logs, but also the capability to create very easy parsers uh, for things that we do not know. Yeah, so customer can extend it to custom applications yeah, and they can do the monitoring and so on. Also, really important analytical rule engines, yeah, uh, that have a lot of knowledge and capability to extend what we have in there. Next service, yeah, really one is CloudGuard. Okay, so this is a cloud security posture management tool. Yeah, it is our next generation solution. Oracle is offering free of charge for all our customers. Yeah, because security is one of the most important things that we take in consideration in all our products. It is capable of detecting misconfigurations. Yeah, that were done into our uh, uh, products yeah, that we have in the cloud. Maybe you created a VCN and you open a port that it should not be opened, or maybe you created an, ob an object storage and that object storage is not uh, properly uh, secured yeah, and it is a public one and instead of being uh, private and so on. Okay, so this is very powerful. And the third option that is something that uh, our SOC specialists um, enjoy it yeah when, when they're gonna see it they have also this threat intelligence that is directly integrated into the product also it's you also have the threat intelligence in cloud guard but you also have threat intelligence in login analytics so when you're gonna ingest logs you're gonna have ips in there public ips those public ips can be tested automatically by oracle and we can uh, show you directly look this is a command and control server these are uh, uh, let's say ips that are used by malware to propagate against other infrastructure and so on 
So this is done automatically in the back end with you free of charge and you only need to go and let's say create proper queries that are pointing to your environment yeah, for your use cases. Okay, we have a lot of generic use cases that can be used, but usually we are very proud of the flexibility of creating your own use cases. Okay, I think I have finished with uh, talking. <laughs> yeah, just talking in here without showing you anything. So now I will share my screen and I will move into the um, demo mode. Okay. So the main thing that uh, you see in here, yeah, we log in, in the, into that console, everyone is seeing this page. But one thing, yes, yeah, some people are missing is this dashboard option, okay? So this is the first thing that we're taking in consideration here if you're thinking of observability. What you can do with the dashboard option in here, yeah, you can add basic things that you want to monitor. Very simple, you click on add a widget, you select what you want to monitor, you select a namespace here yeah, for monitoring, and okay, login is something that is coming from login analytics. But in here, I can go and get data from a compute agent, yeah, from my uh, environment. And I want to look at the CPU utilization without moving to different services and so on, okay? And in here, I want to give the name for those services that I want to monitor, okay? So let me find the resource display name. So with all of this, yeah, I can select the names of them or something like that. Let me put, uh, I want the mean rate yeah, of the data and as simple as that, directly on uh, when login i log in into my environment first time yeah i don't know maybe i went to sleep and i want to go in the morning and see what's happening and i want to see i have 90 percent something like that yeah i'm gonna see a widget like this based on that yeah from here i can go to another so, so, a service yeah i can save it this one and uh, i can go directly to the monitoring part and from the monitoring part i can go uh and create the different alarms, yeah, based on the things that uh, needs to be used in my environment. Okay, so uh, my presentation is going to be, let's say, jumping from service to service, yeah, because timing is not on our side. We have a lot of products, and I'm trying to show you many things that can be used very easy by you. And I will focus more at the, the end, yeah, on the other products like logging analytics to look in more. Next service, yeah, you, you've seen the monitoring part, yeah, how we can do it, we can create a dashboard directly from the data in there. But if you want more than a dashboard and you want to go and look into the data, the monitoring service, yeah, has this option, yeah, to uh, exploring. As you can see, you have the compartment where you have the data and you can go and use the metric namespace that are, uh, let's say, of use. So metric namespace, yeah, it is a collection of um, uh, resources that are emitting metrics. Okay, so this is what the metric namespace is. After that, you have different metrics here yeah, that you can use. And in here, you have different type of statistics. Okay, so that is really important. And in here, you select how you want to see them uh, uh, into, the, into the view. With all of these, yeah, you have the metrics, you have everything, put it in a graphic. Yeah, different colors for different resources and so on. You can add additional dimensions, metrics, and so on. But from here, if you want to get notified, yeah, you don't want just to see the dashboard that I showed you at the beginning. You can go, you can click, click on alarm. You can give it a name to alarm. Yeah, I will go. As I said, I'm on fast and furious mode right now. Uh, you're going to select the metric description. You're going to leave everything yeah, as it was before. Or maybe you want to check, uh, increase the interval. Yeah, maybe one minute is too, uh, let's say, low for you. And you don't want to get uh, stressed out yeah, on this one, getting a lot of... Uh, the data points and so on yeah so you can change it as you want again now we have to select again the dimension so let's put the resource display name we can select the value just if you want to, to receive notification only for one machine or if you want to create for all the machines in there and in here you see we have the graphic and let me put in here a value let's say when something goes over 80 percent only at that point i can get a critical alert but i can also go and put a warning when it goes over 60%, okay? So with this in, in place, you're gonna get alerts, alerts, yeah, multiple alerts and so on when you need it, yeah? You don't have to go and watch all the time it is. Now, alert notification, this is how you receive the, these alerts, yeah? So you can send it on email, but you can also create a different topic for this. And in here you have functions that can, let's say you can do some customization and send it to your own solution. Doesn't matter what they're in the back end. We can connect to HTTPS endpoints. Yeah, we can send to PagerDuty. We can do it on Slack or even send SMSs if needed. 
And at the end, you can also send the formatted message. You can go and create um, your uh, pretty JSON message in a nice way, or you can send it the ugly way as a raw message. Okay, it's your choice. And also you have the capability to uh, enrich a little bit those messages to look much nicer than they look in general. Now, I finish with this part of the monitoring and I want to move uh, very fast to one of the important uh, solution. Yeah, you remember I told you, if basic monitoring is enough for you, yeah, it's free of charge with, uh, let's say, maybe a very low cost if you go over a, a lot of billion of uh, data sets in there. But if you want something more advanced, yeah, if that part of data that you're not seeing in there is not enough, let's say uh, I have a machine in here. Let me see if I have some data on this one. Yeah, okay. So I have an instance, I have CPU utilization, I have load average, memory, and so on. Yeah, so this is a basic a normal machine. Uh, if this is enough for you, then it's going to be compute and this is also free of charge to have this option. But uh, if you want to go more, you want to see more details about your machine yeah, from the monitoring part and so on, then you can promote it to uh, those machines and you're able to see more about even CPU load. Yeah, You can see it at uh, different times, how it was, some different uh, uh, differences. You can look at memory utilization, also logical and the total usage. And also file system utilization. Do you want to know how much space you have on your machine? Yeah, if you are, let's say you're using Windows and your C drive, it is uh, at 90% of usage. At this point, you can create an alert as I showed you before, and you're gonna receive that type of notification. Good, how we can promote these machines? It's also very simple. Let's select, uh, let's say machine that we want to put it in here, like goes to resource discovery. And in here, we need to find the machine that has an agent, yeah, a management agent inside it. We click discover new resource. We select the resource type that you want. If we have a test Tomcat, if we have EBS, if we have Microsoft SQL, Oracle databases, pluggable database, people software, logic, so on. Yeah, I select it. Yeah, easiest way for me would be to select this. In here, I can give it a name, but if I want to give it a name, first I want to look for an agent, yeah, that is capable of doing this. So let's say I take this machine, I'm going to give it uh, the name of the machine and I'm going to click discover new resource. Okay. In here, there was a menu. Uh, there is a button that says the prerequisites. It's really important to take in consideration yeah, for the prerequisites. Yeah. For each of the things that you have to do. If there are on premises uh, resources, you need to follow this, maybe create additional policies inside OCI and so on. If something is not working in OCI, the first thing that you need to look is into your policy. Everything is created with deny all. So that is important yeah, to have uh, this uh, working properly. After you do this, yeah, the resource discovery is starting and you'll be able to do monitoring of those posts as you've seen it before. On APM part, yeah, I, I don't have a demo on the APM side, but APM is a very powerful solution. Yeah, Until now you've seen things related from host to from application side and so on. But what if you're going to want to get additional data? You want to see how a user is loading your web file or your web page. Yeah? You can see all the traces, all the span. You can see if the user is coming from different location. We can also put the JavaScript agent inside our browser and we're able to uh, identify the browser, their behavior. We can see what is the page is coming from page A to B to three uh, to page C and so on. We can also identify bottlenecks in your web application. Yeah. So we can identify if the application is loading properly until uh, one server in the back end that is doing some call in the back uh, in the, to the database. We can identify the queries in your database with additional services that uh, uh, are not working properly and so on. Okay. So this is a really powerful solution and it needs a dedicated uh, yeah, session on it. But I only have to talk to you about it high level. Now, Next service, really important service that you have is the logging one, okay? So the logging services are referring to the capability of collecting logs. Audit logs tells you everything that is happening in your tenancy, everything that is uh, done through API calls, uh, CLI calls, console, and so on. Yeah, so everything is put it in here. Oracle is keeping for you for 365 days and you can do with them what you want. What I usually do, I take the audit log, I create a service connector, and I'm sending this data directly to, yeah, from logging and I'm sending it to logging analytics. I have this already pre-configured, so I have a lot of data sent from collected from my machines directly to logging analytics. Now, one of the things that uh, I'll show you related to the, this logging part, 
are custom logs. Okay, so in OCI, we have two type of three types of logs. Yeah, audit logs, service logs, and custom logs. Okay, so service logs means that if you want to monitor a certain service, yeah, in your tenancy, you need to select that uh, service like uh, flow logs uh, and so on. You select them, you enable the log, and you put them in a log group. Okay, after the data is in there, you are able to do basic searches in here, or you can send it to a more advanced analytical uh, engine outside. Now, if someone is asking you, I want to monitor a, a custom application. Yeah, I have logs from that application, but I want to monitor it and I don't know how to collect the logs. So in here, you have another option, create a custom log. And when you create that custom log, you need to create a, a agent configuration, okay? So with an agent configuration, what you can do, you can uh, specify yeah, the location of the logs, okay? So in here, you select the log path. It can be Windows or it can be uh, uh, yeah, Windows log path, like yeah, agent configuration location, your application, .NET application, and so on location. Or it can be yeah, Windows event log directly. So in here, you can select the channels. After that, you specify the log destination and create. Okay, after you create it, in here, you see I have already created two, uh, two log inputs, and you also have an option to apply the parsing directly on OCA side. Okay, so we can go, we can take the log path. This is a log uh, ODD logs. We have the parser room ODD, and that's it. Okay, very simple. Now, what I have done, yeah, related to this. I have installed on one of my machines, um, yeah, this uh, ODD, yeah, because the machine that I have in here, it is uh, an Oracle uh, Linux, ODD is enabled by default, but if it's going to be, let's say, a new machine by uh, in there installed, first you need to check if you have this service in there, so this is the command, sudo systemctl status ODD. After that, what you need to do after the service is started and so on, you should create some custom ODD rules, okay? As I told you, yeah, I'm coming from security as a background. So what I really like, I like Mitre Attack Techniques, okay? So with Mitre Attack Techniques, I can go and I can, let's say, enrich the logs that I'm collecting. I'm looking at different type of commands. I'm looking at different uh, things that are happening in, in my tenancy. And I'm collecting data like this, okay? Every time when something like this is appearing, I'm getting a new field into my logs that is looking yeah, and telling me that something is happening related to privilege escalation, or maybe some data was copied in my environment, or someone is copying, uh, let's say, is trying to do a remote access to that data. Okay, based on the data that I have configured and collected uh, from that machine, I can look and I can explore these logs directly into this service. Okay, so these are var logs, yeah, so they're collecting the data from uh, slash var log and uh, authentication logs and so on. But in here, if you look at them, yeah, so this data, it is collecting from ODD logs. Basic logs, you have data. And in here, you have the data that was enriched. Okay, so we don't enrich data. Okay, you are able to find this, yeah, commonly used port, yeah, error. It might be a false positive, yeah, it's true, but uh, at least you know it. You don't have to go on your machine and do this type of monitoring every time when you need it. So based on this, what we can do, we can go and look with a basic log search in here, okay? So with a basic log search, yeah, I can do additional drill downs or I can save some of them. Yeah, I have in here, let's say one, uh, let's say search like this one, yeah, remote access tools. I can look into it. I have something. I don't have any logs in the last 60 minutes on to five minutes on this one. But let me go and look for another search log in here. Maybe something related to common use ports. Yeah, this should be have to have more. Okay. So as you can see, I have, have something very simple. I have to look for certain things in my logs directly. I have these safe searches. Why I showed you these safe searches? Yeah, remember I told you. We have tools that are integrated uh, with one with each other and they're extending the capability. Now I'll jump a little bit into the identity and security part and I'll click on CloudGuard. Okay, CloudGuard is the service yeah, that has the capability to collect data from uh, different locations 
by default uh, from all our OCI audit logs is looking and doing uh, different uh, detections, machine learning. Yeah, you know, a lot of things that are in the back end. We don't even know about them, how they're working. But also it has an option in here that is called a data source. Okay. And with a data source, you can create a different query. Okay. So what you can do in here, we can look at the query that we have created in here. We can apply this one. Okay. And we can import it directly in here. What we need to do, we need to look a little bit into the query syntax because it's not as simple as it, it looks like. Yeah. Because in here, you need to put for the, um, um for the cloud guard you need to map it to a key okay yeah so uh, you need to do the mapping after the key and after that you create this uh, this rule in here okay very simple very fast after we created the query we're gonna see additional problems detected but those problems are related to the data that uh, is on your machines it's not related to oci so you can extend this detection solution that we have in here to all your on-premise or to the other cloud to provide the solutions. Yeah, very simple, very fast and uh, very powerful tool. Moving next, yeah, from this solution, we go uh, to another one. Yeah, so we have the Cloud Guard. Yeah, Cloud Guard also has an option to send uh, outside of it the data, yeah, the, the problems, yeah, the, the, if something is generated, yeah, we need to enable in the responding, yeah, the capability to create cloud events. So if I go now back to observability and into the event service, okay, and in here, to my environment, okay, I can create a new rule in here okay so in here let's say i want to go to look for cloud guard and i can look for different problems when a problem is detected every time i want to go and send to the stream i select the stream uh, location and from there every time i can send uh, this cloud guard events directly to login analytics very simple and uh, yeah i also have data from another location security product into my login analytics too okay now let me look at the timing we are okay now so now in here we have uh, this login analytics service we also have some tools that are related to database monitoring like database management like operation inside okay so if we want to do this type of monitoring of the tools we have the option to do it using an agent okay so an agent yeah it is uh, a, a very uh, who low resources using uh, agent in their has the capabilities that can be installed on Windows, on Linux, on, uh, on uh, I think we also have Spark. Yeah, we also have different architecture that can be installed in there. So yeah, you can download this agent from here. You need to create a key. So when you create a key in here, yeah, you specify uh, um, a unique ID that can be used to connect that agent to your uh, environment at yeah, your tenancy. And from there, yeah, you do the installation of the agent. After the agent is installed, you can look into it and you're going to see different data, how much CPU is used for that uh, agent at the beginning. And after that, as you can see, it's under 5%. The usage is 1%. You can see how much space is using in there. You can see the agent memory usage. You can see how much data it has and that is collecting for telemetry and monitoring and so on. Other important thing, sometimes you might, might need to want to enable the agent logs. Okay, so um, you, you can take a look into what's happening in there. But also you have this menu, deploy plugins. So with one agent uh, in here, you can go and uh, you can go and uh, um, you can select stack monitoring you can select operation inside you can select the services that you want to, to to use the agents that you have in there okay so this is very simple and very nice to use okay so from here yeah next step that i want to show you today is how to install an agent yeah on your machine it, it's very simple so what i have done i have prepared the machine yeah so this is a demo machine uh that does not have anything installed. 
okay so at this point is not connecting i need to go uh, to the my compute side and look why it's not working yeah so it is basic troubleshooting this is a new machine i have the machine that is started in here so it is a machine that is running in a private subnet yeah so that means that is not accessible from outside but also yeah, in the private i don't have any ports open by default i need to attach a network security group to it so it is another way yeah to secure the machines uh, from uh, uh, access from people that uh, will not want to access your environment okay so yeah we have the machine in here so we're connected to this machine so at this point we want the first thing to do let me see if i have disabled something okay yeah so yeah it has one part i will disable this one next option that i have to do is to connect and get okay i have to this the command let me go and find something I need to get the Java first and after that the agent. So to do that, I have already up downloaded from Oracle site uh, both Java and my uh, images. So in here in the observability, yeah, so I want to install Java. I'll get this Java. I'll create a pre-authenticated request. I'll copy the pre-authenticated request. I'll go back to the instance and I will download it directly in here. I think it's gonna give me an error, no, okay. So yeah, so Java is downloaded in there. I can open the folder. Also, if I'm still on the download part, let me download the Windows agent, yeah, the management agent that we have. So create a pre-authenticated request. I'll copy the pre-authenticated request. I'll go back to this machine and download also the agent. Okay, I will save the file in here. Now on the machine, let me install Java. Okay, until Java is installed, I need to start man prompt, run as administrator. Okay, let me install the Java. And in here, yeah, after I install Java, I need to create a link. So every time when, let's say, maybe we update Java, we have different. Uh, uh java and so on um we can go and uh let's say do a link yeah so we need to run something like this mk link i have the command in here so let me copy it copy yeah so oh, okay here so yeah, I have a junction created for this. And now I need to set the Java home to the latest. I can load this to a command, but I don't remember the command. So what I can do at this point, let me log out, sign out and re-log in again. So yeah, the path should be recreated in here. Okay, so again, administrator yes okay so let me open the download page i have the agent in here let me extract the agent okay let me name the agent agents or something like that or agent if i have different locations and now i want to create a new file in here I'll create a file that is called RSP as a response file for it. Uh, yeah, with the data that will help me communicate directly with uh, the OCI. So in here, I will tell them what is my uh, configuration. So open with this is a machine that is yeah, starting from zero. We go in here, we take the data that we need. back in here we put it as you can see it is a key unique key it's a lot longer so but i'll not show it 
in here, yeah, Lino, uh, Windows 2009 demo, then give it a name, yes, how it will gonna appear in there. I can save this file now, okay? So we have this uh, agent in here. So CD, let me move it one level up to make it much simpler for me to cross it. So CD, C, two points agents. Okay, so in here, yeah, agent RSP, installer uh, bat and so on. So what I need to do in here, dot slash installer bat. And in here, the next command that I have to do is to specify the location of uh, this. So it should be agent.rsp. If something is wrong, it's gonna tell me something. Yeah, so Java environment uh, is not set. So let me run the command again in here. Okay, so let's try it again. It's able to read the agent RSP file. Right now it's starting copying the data. It's executing requisites. Okay, so that means that it didn't read the agent. So I have to give the full path. Okay. Second. So yeah, if the agent wasn't installed properly, then you need to do the installation uninstalled and after the to run it again. Agents. Okay. Agent install. Okay. Yeah. So with everything that is uh, proper in there, uh, yeah, the agent will be installed. Now, if I go back to the observability, and we can look at the management agent. The agent should appear in here very soon. Okay, so Windows test. Yeah, so it's appearing in here. Not yet. It's not yet. This is another machine. So it's registering management agent. After it's going to get after this, it's going to see the plugins that I want to use. I want to use for login analytics. I want to use for application management. Yeah, so stack monitoring and also operation inside. Okay, next uh, option that we have in here is, uh, let's say, to install the same agent on uh, a database. Okay, so in here, let me see if I have the database. This is DB demo. Okay, so let me go to my databases, my test databases. Uh, this is the one that is created in here. I can go to nodes. I am in a private, I can take the IP or I can take the name. Let me put this one in here. Until the, uh, the agent is installed, yeah, I can go in here. So in here, we can go and the first thing that we need to do is to install uh, the Java. Yeah, the Java agent on the machine. So if I go and write uh, Java minus V, yeah, it's a server, it, it should not uh, show us additional things or something like that. Yeah, so we do it from zero, from scratch. And also there is a request to have uh, Java 8 uh, over 185, yeah, the version. So what I can do again, I can go to my object storage where I have the machine installed. Okay, so in here, 
I want to go take this RPM. Create the authenticate request. Copy it from here. Okay, I will get that one. Okay, so in here we go. Yeah, install. Oh no, this should be with the RPM installation. RPM minus IVH and GRE. So it is installed in there. And next one that I need to do, I need to take the agent. So let me close this one and let's get the agent is an RPM file again, or I want to use the, let me use also the RPM again for this one. Okay, so we get the agent from there. Now sudo and rpm minus ivh or curl agent. I don't want that you have it. It is doing the installation. The yeah, agent is installed successfully. So now what I can do the yeah, agent dot r s d. I think RDP is writing okay. Now I'll go back. I'll can you use the same one? Only change the name of the machine. Okay, so go in here. Okay, this is the name. Doesn't matter yet, it can be different from the other one. Okay, so we have this. Now, what I need to do, I need to copy this one. Let me make it a little bit smaller. So you can also see everything. Okay, not good. Close X. So sudo, I want to copy this one, agent.rst, and let's put it in the location where it was installed. Yeah, so let's put it in here. Okay, now that I have put it, if I'm gonna look into it, I will see that it does not have the proper uh, rights for it. So I'll use MNG agent. This is the user that is running the other agent. And I want to put it in here, slash agent with RSP, and I forgot the sudo in front of it. Okay, so now, the last thing that I need to do is to run this command. Okay, so in here, this. And if everything is properly okay, configured like Java, everything is you know, working, it should install the agent, it found the plugins. Okay, and it's starting the agent. So right now, yeah. We also have a database, uh, an agent installed on the database, so you can go on the database and you can enable very simple the database management agent and also operation inside. Okay, so in here, if we go to the database, yeah, we can click enable on this. We need to create a user. It is a different discussion, as I told you. I will focus on this on the other things. Yeah. So it finds everything that you need. We can enable the full management if we're basic, if you don't want to pay, and that's it. Now, let me go back to login analytics. Yeah, because right now well, we have data in login analytics, we have the agent, we have everything that we need in there, and we want to start to collect the data. We can send the data, as you seen it earlier, from uh, the log uh, the, uh, from uh, logging yeah, directly in here, but we can also collect the data from the agent. Yeah, so this is basic collection from OCI resources, or we can go and select the management agent. So this means that that agent can be on any cloud provider, on-premise and so on. 
So in here, I can click select Windows events. Okay, so let me look what is the IP of the machine that we just configured in there. So it is this one, edit, okay, 172. So let me go back in here, yeah. So I have the agent, it's seen as a host entity type. I'll press next. I will go with the basic ones, yeah. So these are basic sources that are pre-configured. I will put them in the OS logs menu. I will validate and configure the log collection. And that's it, yeah. Logs will appear in there, yeah. They will be collected directly from a machine, but it takes usually takes a few minutes until the data is put it in there. Now, what I can do, yeah, I have those logs is in there added. I have the entity created in here. You see, this is uh, the management agent. This is the one that is just installed, but I want to go to this one. And in here, I have some sources. Yeah, this is just for the host. And let me go to the IP, okay? You see, these are basic sources that are associated with it. If I go on this entity, it I can get additional location yeah, from where I can go and read data yeah, on that machine, additional logs, except if I don't want only to collect this one. Okay, now in here, I can also go directly from this one and see the logs that I have uh, in, the, yeah, in the log explorer. I can go and see only the logs that are related to this entity. Okay, so I'll be, if they're collected, I'll be able to see them directly in here. But what I wanted to show you, one thing that is really important for me is to collect logs that are generated, uh, let's say, from security perspective. For Windows, we recommend Sysmon. For um, Linux, we recommend ODD. Timing is, uh, you know, we don't have the time to do all the demos, everything that we want to look. But at least I'm trying to show you, yeah, how easy it is to do all these sort of type of associations. Okay, I move now, yeah, to the Sysmon part in here, yeah. So these are sources created by me, yeah. I duplicated an existing uh, security event. And from there, yeah, I added additional things that are related to Sysmon events that are generated. Now, with all of these, yeah, you see these are the ones that are already the other machines, Windows machines that I have, and I have this uh, associated to them. And if I click on an associated one, I see that the last one that I just created is not associated. I'll press add association. I'll send also these logs to the OS logs uh, group that I have, and that's it. Okay, it's it's very simple. Yeah, to collect logs to do all of this, and as you can see, already logs are started to be collected. So I have security events, application events, and system events at this point. Okay, I can get them. Everything is coming from this entity. Yeah, from this IP, and if I want to do advanced things on it, I can click on it and I can add an extended field definition. Okay, I'm getting the data. I'm selecting what I want to look in here, maybe username, not should not be system, we can ignore it and so on, but we can take it, we can put an extract definition and you can edit our logs. Other things, yeah, that is really nice to have it in here is the parsers, okay? So how easy it is to create a parser in OCI? Uh, let me select one created manually. Okay, let's say this is a parcel created for um, data that is coming from monitoring. Okay, I'm getting data from monitoring in OCI and I'm creating different uh, dashboards, advanced dashboards in here. So this is a JSON file. I'm putting the JSON file in here. After the file is put it, uh, the file, the content of a log is, as example is put it in there. I'm able to see the fields and do the mapping for them, yeah? So I select the metadata yeah, and put things in there. If I do not have that field in my logging analytics, I'm going, I select the data type, I'm giving the name and I'm creating it for me and I'll be able to use it. So as you can see, very simple things to do it and so on. Now, let's say that we have data, data is coming into login analytics, we have data from security, we have data from different products and so on, and we want to see them much nicer. At this point, dashboards are the obvious choice for you, okay? So with dashboards, you can identify different IPs that are connecting to your environment. You can identify if you have a web application firewall enabled in OCI on the load balancer, you can collect the data and you can see the name of the attacks that are done against your web application. We can do different computations on it. Yeah, you can see how much data is sent outside from each machine. 
you can see how much uh, public IPs are connected to your environment. Okay, you can see the number of DNS queries and from where they're coming. And also in here, you have this option and yeah, like, uh, yeah, I have Sysmon events. As you can see, I have the Sysmon event uh, number in there. I can see the total number for each of it. Yeah, for the event ID and so on. And also I have done an enrichment using OSSM IDs. Okay, so these are things that you can do. You can extend it and so on. You can click it and you're gonna see that in here, this is a lookup. That lookup is looking in a table that I created normally, yeah, well, manually for me. And based on that, I can see what's happening. Yeah, based on this, yeah, let's say if I'm gonna see this type of event ID with a certain number with, with a different sequence of uh, events IDs and so on. Yeah, we can um, yeah go in depth into this. Okay, so you can go Google is your friend on this part or Bing anything any search engine DuckDuckGo and so on. You can put it in here to search for it and we have a lot of things in here huh? yeah also cmd yeah. so these are relationship they're explaining authenticate authenticate from a certain location these are the different events id that are generating okay and it's very simple to do maybe threat hunting yeah in your environment if you don't want you want to have this type of visibility but the security guys, they can only do go more in depth into this. Okay, as I got to the end of my time, yeah, I- Can, have... can I ask you a quick question? Um, yes. If you're, uh, let's say a customer who's at kind of month one or two of using OCI, there's obviously the initial, uh, the initial dashboard that you should you can click on them. But uh, if I'm at six months or a year, um, is do customers at that point kind of go? I really should have uh, installed some of this logging right at the very beginning. Is that something that comes up in the calls that you have every day? Every day, oh, okay. I have calls with my customers and showcasing them these capabilities. And uh, I can say 90% of them are doing during my call the enablement of the basic features at least, and okay, you know, so the, yeah, the rest of it. Okay, so glad I asked that then. So, so it, it might there might be a bit more work to it, but it's definitely the payoff is definitely worth it. Is yes, you you have that kind of visibility. You you know, I have some dashboards in here, and we have a thing that is called cross service dashboards. That means I can collect data from uh, also from operation inside, from database management, from APM, and with all of this collection, yeah, I can create a SOC uh, dashboard. I can create a NOC dashboard. Yeah, so people are able to have this type of visibility from three, five different sources. APM, they have an option in there, you know, that it's called drill down. Yeah, so in drill down, we can point to different other services that are outside of OCI. So yeah, we find something in an application, we can also connect directly with uh, um, a service management tool. Yeah, we can connect with uh, Jira for ticketing, we can connect to a service now and so on. Yeah, so that well, a lot of options, yeah, that, that is in there. Yeah, what I like to say, yeah. sky is not the limit anymore, <laughs> even if we're in the clouds. <laughs> um, I, I, I know, Ed, uh, Michael, thanks for answering all the questions. Um, I know there's a there was a ton of posts in chat. Um, so just to allay everybody's fears, and uh, uh, this is recorded, and Adrian, we've got a PDF that we'll share with all these links in it uh, right after this call and stuff. So, uh, well, actually, you'll get it in the email um uh, we post it on Slack if you want to join uh, join us over there as well. So uh, that GitHub link, I'm pretty sure Adrian, you put that in the the, the links, didn't you? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you did. Yes, we yeah. do have them in the in the presentation. Yeah, cool. Okay, okay. Um, if you are not, if something is missing, you have the Slack channel where you can ping me. And perfect. Say, yeah, Michael, exactly. we can answer that also. Okay, thanks, dude. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, we hope that you enjoyed this session and you find it useful. Thank you, Adi, for delivering such a great presentation and demo. Thank you, Michael, for taking care of all these questions. And they, they were a lot, um, so to speak. Uh, thank you, Tom, for being here together with, uh, with us. And we hope to, to see everybody soon in cloud coaching sessions. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the day. Bye-bye.